Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias, everybody. I am Gil Quinones, President and CEO of the New York Power Authority, also known as NIPA. Uh, before we begin, I would like to recognize some of the special guests who are with us today. And if I could just ask everybody to hold your applause until the end, I would appreciate that. Uh, we have with us Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul, Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez, Congressman Joseph Crowley, from the New York State Assembly, Marcos Crespo, Walter Mosley, Victor Pichardo, Jose Rivera, Joanne Simon, uh, New York City Public Advocate Leticia James, Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz, Eric Gonzalez, Kings County District Attorney, from the New York City Council, Andy King, from Puerto Rico, Mayor of Morovis, Carmen Maldonado. From Labor, we have Randy Weingarten, Gary LaBarbera, Ida Diaz, Jill Ferrillo, Edward Rosario, Tony Utano, Jose Maldonado, and Evelyn De Jesus. This morning, we will hear from several champions for Puerto Rico here in New York. We will first hear from Budget Director Robert Mojica. We will then look forward to hearing from our great Governor Andrew Cuomo, and then Congressman, Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez, and Assemblyman Marcos Crespo will also speak. Now, over the past year, we have seen just how strong the relationship is between the people of New York and Puerto Rico. In the wake of Hurricane Maria, New York stepped up to help our brothers and sisters in Puerto Rico recover from the storm's devastation. Under the governor's leadership, the state deployed incredible resources and manpower to Puerto Rico, including hundreds of utility personnel to rebuild the power infrastructure. This morning's breakfast is an opportunity to say thank you to the NIPA team and to all the New York men and women who are supporting our effort to rebuild the power grid. Our friends from Con Edison, National Grid, PSE, PSENG Long Island, LIPA, NYSIG, Rochester Gas and Electric, Central Hudson, and all the contractors who work with us in Puerto Rico and especially the families who were left behind when their loved ones were working 16-hour days every day in Puerto Rico for the past seven months. And I'm also proud to say that our workers w worked very safely. We worked about a million man hours without any major safety accident. So it is now my pleasure to introduce one of the highest ranking appointed Puerto Ricans in New York State government history and someone who has been instrumental in the recovery effort, my good friend, Budget Director Robert Mojica. Thank you, Gil. Good morning, anyone. First, I'd like to make some acknowledgments. I'd like to acknowledge Betty Enriquez, Director of the New York State Office of Trade and Tourism for Puerto Rico. Guillermo Linares, President of the Higher Education Services Corporation. Guillermo. Roger Perino, Commissioner of the Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services. Roberta Reardon, Commissioner of the Department of Labor. Clarissa Rodriguez, Chair of the Workers' Compensation Board. Rose Rodriguez, Senior Advisor to the Commissioner of Labor. Melissa Casada, Director of Latino Affairs. Congressman Joe Crowley, and New York City Public Advocate Tish James. It was an honor to have been appointed Budget Director by the Governor placing a Puerto Rican for the first time in the highest position ever in state government. From this position, I have a lot of influence, and I can get things done. 
but when Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico, this role took on a new, more personal meaning for me. The governor has allowed me to lead the state's relief efforts over the last few months, and it has been truly inspiring to see the response from Governor Cuomo and New Yorkers across the state. My family was deeply affected by this tragedy personally. Both of my grandparents, mi abuelo, mi abuelita, live in Arecibo. When, that's right, Arecibo. When Hurricane Maria struck, my 93-year-old grandfather was living alone on the island. Through the grace of God, my grandmother happened to be here in New York. Like many of you, we did not hear anything about my grandfather or his whereabouts for almost two weeks. Eventually, we heard from a neighbor that he was okay. However, <laughs> however, with no power, no water, no phone service, no 911, no emergency services, it was not safe for him to stay, and my family and I decided to bring him temporarily to New York. We are not sure that my grandfather will ever be able to return to his patria to live out his final years. And it's a personal tragedy, and it's personally devastating for him. However, my grandmother has returned to Arecibo and is very happy to be home. This is why I'm so grateful for everything that New Yorkers and the governor are doing for the families in Puerto Rico. And I'm so proud of the difference that New Yorkers are making for the families on the island and here in New York. Together, we have accomplished so much. Under the leadership of Governor Cuomo, we are delivering the assistance, the support, and advocacy that Puerto Rico needs to rebuild. Thank you. Governor Cuomo was on the first plane into Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria, providing assistance and listening to the needs of the people of the island to help develop an action plan. The governor then launched the Empire State Relief and Recovery Effort, deploying more than 1,000 workers to the island, including utility workers that were critical at the time, and distributing 4,400 pallets of supplies donated by New Yorkers from across the state. This spring, we launched a new initiative, the New York Stands with Puerto Rico Recovery and Rebuilding Initiative, to help address the island's housing crisis and to rebuild Puerto Rico better and stronger than before. As part of this effort, hundreds of students from SUNY and CUNY and dozens of labor volunteers will be in Puerto Rico this summer to work with local not-for-profits on the ground to help rebuild. I want to thank some of our not-for-profit partners, All Hands and Hearts, Heart 9-11, Nehama, and the SUNY and CUNY leadership for their help with this effort. A, sp A special thanks goes out to Edison Sabala from UNICEF USA for all of your support throughout the last few months. We know that Puerto Rico's recovery will require long-term rebuilding effort. We need your help. We need your financial support. We need businesses who can lend their expertise and their employees. And we need non-for-profit support to continue, and we continue to seek volunteers over the next few months. We cannot forget, only with all of us working together can we rebuild the island. Today, while the federal government seems to turn a blind eye to the suffering on the island, Governor Cuomo and New Yorkers from across the state are stepping up for Puerto Rico. So it is with my great pleasure and honor to introduce to you a true champion for Puerto Rico, the 56th governor of New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Gracias, gracias. Donde están los boricuas? I can't hear you. Donde están los boricuas? Well, I am so excited to be here. And today is so, so important on so many levels. First, we have a really great group, and I'm, it's a sign of the love for the Puerto Rican community that we have this outpouring of support, because this parade is different. This parade is different. Let me start with Robert Mujica, who is the highest appointed Puerto Rican ever in state government. There are two positions. Two positions, the secretary and the budget director, and I talked to Rob, I said, which one do you want? He said, I want the one that controls the money. That's what he said, Rob. And he has done a fantastic job. As he said, this is personal, what happened in Puerto Rico. It's personal to all New Yorkers. And it was personal to Rob, and he's done a great job in providing leadership. Let's give him a round of applause. We have our great Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul here. We have Gil Quinones and all the utility companies who made us so proud, NIFA and Con Ed, and National Grid and PSENG, and New York State Electric and Gas, and Central Hudson. Let's give them all a round of applause. We have our brothers and sisters in the labor movement who came together, Randy Weingarten and Gary LaBarbera and Jill Ferrillo from the nurses, and Tony Utamo. Everyone came together to help. We have our great public advocate, Tish James. Let's give her a round of applause. Luis Maldonado, who's done a great job organizing this parade on the very tough times. We have a great Grand Marshal, Leslie Morales. Let's give him a round of applause. A lot of people tell me I'm good looking, like uh, S.I. Morales. What do you think? Yeah, you th I don't think so. I don't think so. The, let me say this about today's parade. Today, in many ways, it's bittersweet for me because there are two different messages. Uh, first, we celebrate, we celebrate what the Puerto Rican community has done for New York. We celebrate the progress of the Puerto Rican community in all aspects of our society here. Uh, you look at the elected officials and the growth in the number of representatives from the Puerto Rican community. First, Puerto Rican elected to the New York State Legislature was who? This is a test, Puerto Rican history. Herson knows. Oscar Rivera. Oscar Rivera. Rivera. Rivera, like Jose Rivera. 1937, 1937, but look at how far we have come and look at the number of elected officials and the talent in our elected officials. Look at Marcos Crespo and look at Nidia Velasquez and look at Ruben Diaz and look at Carlina Rivera and look at Richie Torres. We have made tremendous, tremendous progress in the Serranos. We now have Puerto Rican representation all across the state, and that's the way it should be. So let's give a round of applause. We have seen growth 
and contribution all across the board, what uh, Lynn Moran Miranda has done. Let's give him a round of applause because he... <laughs> Lynn manuel really has done such a beautiful contribution to the arts and government and communication, and, and he's a worldwide phenomenon. So we celebrate that. We celebrate the resiliency of the people of Puerto Rico who have never given up, who have never asked for more than decency and help. The character of the Puerto Rican people who have been abused by this country but still act with total grace and responsibility and have risen above the injustice that has been done to them. Let's give them a round of applause. We celebrate the closeness of all New Yorkers to the Puerto Rican community because this state came together as a family with their brothers and sisters of Puerto Rican descent and there was there was not a place that I have gone. There is not a person who I have talked to, upstate, downstate, whatever religion, whatever ethnicity, who, has said, who hasn't said, we have to do everything we can for the people of Puerto Rico. New York stands 100% united for the people of Puerto Rico. But there is a second message also today. We celebrate much, but we also stand and march in defiance today. We march and stand in defiance at the gross, obnoxious injustice that this country has done to the people of Puerto Rico. It is, thank you, it is inexcusable how this nation responded to Hurricane, Hurricane Maria. Now, I was in the federal government for eight years under President Bill Clinton. I did the emergency assistance when I was Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. I know what this nation can do when it wants to perform. I know what this nation has done in emergencies in this country, and I know what this country has done for emergencies in other countries. I went to Haiti, I went to the Dominican Republic, I went to Ecuador when we went to help those countries in need. We did more help, better help, faster help, for other countries than we have done for Puerto Rico in, during Hurricane Maria. And the people of Puerto Rico are American citizens. It's not a different country. And there are no second class American citizens. The lack of response, the disrespect, the lack of humanity, the lack of caring, the lack of concern, the ease with which they did it is frankly disgusting and disturbing. It's a symptom of a federal government that believes in a sense of division, that believes people who are immigrants are bad, who believe that people with different color, skin, and different languages are an offense to this nation. And what they did in Puerto Rico was a symptom of that. Anti-American, 
because they turned their back on American brothers and sisters. They turned their back on American citizens. They never said, I'm sorry. They never said, we'll fix it. They never said, we understand, and now we're going to respond. Eight months later, they are still in the state of denial. Well, you're in the state of New York, and we don't accept your denial. When I say a national embarrassment, under President Bush, we had Hurricane Katrina. Do you remember? Hurricane Katrina was another example where the federal government just disregarded people in need. Now, they were poor people. They were people in public housing. They were largely minorities. And the federal government said during Hurricane Katrina, well, we don't respond as if it's a priority. You know how many people lost their lives in Hurricane Katrina? 1,800. You know how many people lost their lives by the latest death toll in Hurricane Maria? 4,500 people. Where is the outrage? Where is the accountability? Where is this federal government saying, I understand? <laughs> During Hurricane Katrina, they were called to task. And there were hearings, and there were reporters, and there was a whole review of what happened in Hurricane Katrina. And it went on for months. But when it comes to Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico, the silence has been deafening. Where is the same outrage? Why are we treating the people of Puerto Rico differently than we treated the people during Hurricane Katrina? There is no answer. And we have to demand the same accountability from this federal government. That's why when Congresswoman Nydia Velasquez stands up and she calls, she calls for a federal commission to study what happened in Puerto Rico so there is truth and accountability and we know what happened and why it happened so it never happens again. We stand in solidarity with the Congresswoman. We want that commission. We want the answers. We want to know why 4,500 people lost their lives. We want to know why the federal government doesn't even know how many people died. <laughs> but we, we see the signs, and we also march in solidarity, because New Yorkers, we look back, but we look forward. And we say, going forward, Puerto Rico has a long road ahead of it. There are many, many issues that have to be resolved. There were many issues that were existing before the storm that were just exacerbated by the storm. And while we curse the darkness and we want answers, and we want to make sure that kind of disrespect never happens again, we are equally committed to the road going forward. We know that Puerto Rico cannot rebuild on its own. They don't have the resources. They're not getting the help from the federal government. Somebody has to step up. Somebody has to say, here I am. I'm your friend. We are family. And when someone in the family needs help, we are here. And those people and that place is the state of New York. We're going to step every step along the road to recovery with the people of Puerto Rico. Our effort this summer that Rob talked about, I want you to take very seriously because while we're doing everything we're doing on a major scale, power, restoration, the donations, etc., we're going to go to Puerto Rico this summer and we're going to 
do it from the ground up. We're going to rebuild individual homes. We're going to rebuild the infrastructure in individual towns. Our brothers and sisters in the labor movement are going to be there. The laborers are going to be there. Randy Weingarten and the teachers are going to be there. We're going to have hundreds of students from SUNY and CUNY. And, and the SUNY and CUNY students are going to be providing personnel, but it's something for all of us to participate in. I was talking to my daughters. They said, Dad, what are we going to do on our summer vacation? I said, we're going to Puerto Rico. <laughs> They said, oh, great, I can work on my tan. I have a problem with tan lines. I said, no, 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 no. We're going to really work, and we're going to rebuild homes, and we're going to show our love, and we're going to show our support in the truest way we do, which is by showing up. New Yorkers, we are not talkers. We just don't talk a good game. We are about action. We're about delivery. We're about making things happen. I'm in government not to talk about what other people should do. I'm in government to show what people can do when they come together <laughs> organized by a government. And that, my friends, is what we're going to do this summer. We are committed to two agendas. One, holding the federal, account federal government accountable for what they did, learning the lesson so it never happens again, and two, rebuilding Puerto Rico, not just to what it was, but a Puerto Rico that is better and stronger and more beautiful than ever before. We will do it together. Que viva Puerto Rico! Que viva Puerto Rico! Que viva Puerto Rico! Que viva Puerto Rico! Thank you! Thank you! Now, it, give, it gives me great pleasure to introduce a true leader, a true champion. As you heard from Rob, we went down on the first plane that could get down to Puerto Rico right after the storm. And they said to us, you know, the first flight is going to be a little bumpy, a little scary, because there are still storms in the area, but we know that you want to go down right away. But I'm a little crazy, and I don't care about the storms, and it's part of my job description. You have to be a little crazy to be governor. <laughs> I go into storms when everybody's leaving the storm. So I called two people. I called Marcos Crespo, and I said, uh, do you have any problem with uh, air flights, air sickness, anything like that? He said, oh, I don't like, uh, I'm not crazy about flying in general. I said, well, we're going to fly into Puerto Rico and it may be a little bumpy. And he said, I'm in. I then called Congresswoman Nydia Velasquez. I said, we're trying to get into Puerto Rico. She said to me, Andrew, I don't care if we have to take a boat, if we have to swim, if we have to fly, if we have to parachute. I want to be there as soon as we can get there. She's been leading the way ever since. She's leading the way in Washington. She's our champion. She's our voice. She's our advocate. Congresswoman Nydia Velasquez. Good morning, everyone. So, 
we heard, we heard the story. And it's painful to know that as a nation, as American citizens, as a nation who has been the beacon of hope to so many, we failed fellow citizens in Puerto Rico. And so, when Secretary Carson came before the Financial Services Committee, it was the day when President Donald Trump issued a tweet out saying that Puerto Ricans are lazy, that they want everything done for them. I was walking into the financial services hearing, and I couldn't believe what I saw. And I grew angry. And the one in the hot seat was Secretary Carson. So I sent a message to the president, and I said, I said to Mr. Carson, tell the president of the United States that the most fundamental and solemn responsibility of any president of this country is to show up when natural disaster strikes. <laughs> and Hurricane Maria struck Puerto Rico September 20th. We went there with the governor the day after, two days after, the President of the United States showed up almost three weeks later. Not to say to the people of Puerto Rico, I will do everything within my power. I will show the people of Puerto Rico the power and fury of the federal government. No, he didn't say that. Instead, he threw paper towels at the people of Puerto Rico. And you know what? Secretary, uh, Chief of Staff, Chief of Staff Kelly called me and invited me to go with the president. God is good. <laughs> I developed a respiratory infection. <laughs> I didn't accompany the president. And you know what? He was lucky. Because believe me, if I was there in his presence, and he who had done what he did, I do not know if I would still standing here or maybe I would have been in a jail. <laughs> so every day, we see and we are witnesses to a president that is a disgrace and embarrassment to this country. So last night, my sister called me from Puerto Rico. My sister. Her husband is battling cancer. She called me last night. Eight months later, crying that she got the power back. So, to the utility workers, To the teachers, to the nurses, to the construction workers, to all the volunteers from the state of New York, 
from the bottom of my heart, there's no way for me to describe how grateful I am to you. But you know what? This happened for one reason. In New York, we take care of our neighbors. That is our motto. But it takes leadership from the top, and that is our governor, Andrew Cuomo. Historically, there is a special bond between Puerto Rico and New York. And in the darkest days of our brothers and sisters in Puerto Rico, New York has been there. Governor, thank you. You've been a champion at a time when the federal government and this president have been absent. Thank you so very much. When we landed in Puerto Rico two days after Maria, and then we took a helicopter to tour the island, he didn't stop. He was talking and talking, the, press, the governor saying, this is need to happen. These are the kind of steps that we need to do. This is what the federal government can do. And you what? You, you, I want for everyone to understand, this was not a trip to go to Puerto Rico to check with the Puerto Rican community back home here in the state of New York. When I went back to Washington and things started to unravel and we saw the lack of empathy of this president and every hurdle put in the way so that Puerto First, how long it took for us to pass a, relief, a, a, a disaster relief package for Puerto Rico. Second, oh, not direct grants for Puerto Rico, but loans. And then the Treasury putting every obstacle. And it was the governor calling me back and telling me, do this. Nerea, I was the secretary at heart. This can happen, this can be done. They should not shortchange in Puerto, about Puerto Rico. When I came back with the governor, the first words that I expressed at the press conference was that the Puerto Rico that I grew in no longer exists. And that is true. It means it's going to take a lot of resources is going to take a lot of work. And this government must be held accountable. We are the voice for Puerto Rico. We know how the federal government has failed Puerto Rico. No one is there for the world to see. So, when we discover and through harbor that 4,645 people have died, how many of them died after Maria because of the lack of response from this government? Puerto Ricans are proud citizens. There is no distinction under our constitution as to what the responsibility of the federal government is when we need to assist fellow citizens. If Puerto Ricans are good to go and fight in our wars, to defend and protect the freedoms that we enjoy, then we are good to demand the responsibility of the federal government to make Puerto Rico whole. Let me close by saying, we know what's going on. The real question is, what are we going to do about it? 
So, get off, get up, and get out. Register to vote, and go out to vote. Go out to vote. Don't get mad, get even. Get even for this president. And let's start showing the power of the Puerto Rican community right here in New York. Get out and vote, and vote. And now, I want to introduce another incredible young Puerto Rican leader. You know, I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but I think that the most important legacy for any public servant is to be able to look back and to say, we paved the way for a new field of leaders. And an incredible, young, brilliant Puerto Rican champion is my friend and brother, Marco Crespo, president of the Hispanic Chamber. Good Puerto Rican style. Primero que nada, les pido la bendición. <laughs> buenos días, buenos días. Gracias por estar aquí. Gracias por celebrar este evento tan especial. Gracias a la comunidad puertorriqueña por reconocer no solamente nuestra cultura, sino la necesidad de luchar más unidos que antes. Sin importar las diferencias políticas, hay que unirnos en nombre de nuestra comunidad. For those of you that are bilingually challenged, I just said hello. If you didn't know, I was born in Puerto Rico. Para, yo soy brujo de nacimiento y bucanero de pueblo. If you know your Puerto Rico town themes, you know that means I was born in Guayama, raised in Arroyo. I'll never forget that Friday, September 22nd, joining the governor that morning, flying into Puerto Rico. Because that was mommy's birthday. And I hadn't heard from mommy, like many of you had not heard from my family. I didn't know how mommy was doing, what was happening. Previous storms that I lived through in Puerto Rico, my town got flooded. We're in a coastal community. Mommy's house is right next to El Rio Nigua. And I had no idea what was happening. The closest I got to being with my family was traveling there with the governor. And we talk a lot about that being the first flight in. But understand, that wasn't the first flight into Puerto Rico that I joined the governor. Well before Hurricane Maria hit, Governor Cuomo organized many of us to go down there during the economic crisis to help Puerto Rico with its health care needs, to fight for Medicaid parity, to fight for better health care services. It was Governor Cuomo who, who took us there to meet with a number of agricultural leaders to talk about how we can work together. It was Governor Cuomo who came to Somos years before Maria hit to open an office that Betty Enriquez runs to help Puerto Rico businesses with the New York market and New York businesses with the Puerto Rico market. There's so much more that is involved in this effort of New York standing for Puerto Rico well before Hurricane Maria hit. And I too want to take this opportunity to thank all of the elected officials. If you're an elected official, please stand up right now. All of my colleagues in government who did so much in their communities, Puerto Rican or not, to raise resources, to collect goods, to send donations. They did an amazing job and I'm grateful to my colleagues in government. I too want to thank the heroes, the men and women of our labor unions and, and all of the different organizations that went down there. You, you, you heard from Nidia mentioned them all, the teachers and the nurses and all the healthcare professionals, the construction workers, the utility workers, every single member of an organized labor union who are understand under attack. They're under attack, they're being undermined and there are powers in this country that want to see us undo the strength of our labor movement, and yet they were the first ones on the ground. They were the first one using resources. They were the first one servicing families. Thank you. Gracias. Que Dios los bendiga. 
por el trabajo que hicieron. Not only the workers, but their family members who had no idea what they were going into, suffering with them. Thank you. I'm supposed to close down, but you know, with the crowd like this, you get really excited. I'm going to close it down. I'm standing between you and the parade, but I do want to say this. Over the last couple of days, I've been asked this question. Last couple of days, I've been asked quite a bit, what has Governor Cuomo done? What has New York State done? Well, let me answer that for you. If you don't know, let me help you answer that question to others who ask you. First and foremost, while the President of the United States was golfing in Florida, while others were twiddling their thumbs and winds like never seen before were devastating our family members, Governor Cuomo was mobilizing and moving and getting things done. Not playing golf, not talking about it, getting things done. When somebody asks you, what has Governor Cuomo done? Well, let me tell you, because we talk about those numbers, 4,000. 645 lives and counting. Understand that number which be bigger if not because of the lives saved by Governor Cuomo and New York State teams that went down there to restore power, to provide health care, to help families, to send food and medical supplies. There would have been more lives lost. What has Governor Cuomo done? He saved Puerto Rican lives. And when somebody asks you, what has Governor Cuomo done? What has New York State done? Well, let me tell you something. While everybody else has moved on to the conversation about the latest tweet or the latest international incident, Governor Cuomo is still organizing us. Just yesterday, we had a meeting of the New York State Roundtable to fight for Puerto Rico, talking about what more can we do. We have plans to go back in this summer. While others have moved on from the conversation, Governor Cuomo is still championing Puerto Rico and its future because that's what New Yorkers do. So when somebody asks you, what has New York State done? Or what has Governor Cuomo done? Look at him dead in the eye with a straight face and say done more than any other executive, than any other leader, than any other elected official. He's done more for Puerto Rico than anyone else in this country. That's what he's done. What have you done? That's the question. That's the answer. Yo soy puertorriqueño. Habemos muchos puertorriqueños aquí. Hemos visto tragedias y hemos visto dificultades. La congresista Velázquez y muchos de los oficiales electos que llevan muchos años sirviendo como líderes políticos han luchado por muchos años y han conseguido muchos cambios para Puerto Rico y mucha ayuda para Puerto Rico. Y lamentablemente hemos permitido que las diferencias locales, políticas, Hemos permitido que nuestras, nuestros enlaces con ciertos grupos nos dividan como una comunidad. Los puertorriqueños somos 5 millones o más en la diáspora y tenemos nuestras diferencias que son importantes y hay que hablar de ellas. Pero si lo que el huracán nos recuerda es que en un momento de tragedia nadie te pregunta de qué partido tú eres, nadie te pregunta que quién es tu alcalde, nadie te pregunta que, qué es lo que tú crees, te preguntan qué tienes para mí que me puedes ayudar. Y en los momentos de tragedia nos acordamos de quiénes somos. Tenemos que unirnos más que nunca. Tenemos que unificar a la comunidad puertorriqueña. Tenemos que darle valor y fuerza al trabajo de Nidia Velázquez, de José Serrano, de Joe Crowley, la delegación de, de, de Washington que ha luchado por nosotros. That responsibility falls on us. Because leaders lead, but there has to be soldiers willing to stand in the back lines, in the front lines, willing to fight and mobilize and do what we need to do. And so I leave you with this. As my Bronx Borough president, and I talked about this weekend, and you'll see us wearing our shirts today, there's a simple message. Three R's that we want you to take away and march with today. The first R is to remember. Remember. The second R is to register. 
organize, register. And the third R is to resist. And if we do that, we can get this done. Say it with me. Remember, Remember. register, Remember. Resist. resist, and never forget that if not for the leadership of Governor Cuomo and the ongoing commitment, many more Puerto Ricans would have lost their lives. I don't know if mommy would be standing, but I know she's there fighting like so many others, and Puerto Rico's future will be bright again because of friends and because of leaders like Governor Cuomo. Gracias, que Dios lo bendiga, and enjoy the parade.